is up, everybody? You're listening to another episode of the State and Anquilo podcast, uh, powered by Johnny Cuba. We're here with the Dos Croquetas team. Uh, we got here Alec and v- Vicky, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so if you guys want to give yourselves a little intro, tell the people about it yourselves, and uh, we'll definitely get into uh, the story of Dos Croquetas. Yeah, thanks for having us. Uh, so my name is Alec. I'm the co-founder of Dos Croquetas, um, and I specialize in marketing and business. Awesome. And I'm Vicky. I'm his partner, and uh, I run production for Croquetas. I'm the chef. You're the the magic behind the the doors. <laughs> awesome. So, uh, I met Alec um, a couple of years ago. Yeah. I, I don't right remember uh, exactly when it was, but I know you guys had just opened on the location on on Bird. Um, and just to give like a little bit of background about how we met, but. Um, I went into the store. I obviously had heard about those croquetas already for, for a while, and I'm like, I gotta try them out. Like a, a, a croqueta with macaroni and cheese in it. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta see what this is all about. Um, so I went with my buddy Chris, um, and he introduced me to you. But um, he told me about kind of like what you guys had done, kind of like where you guys had originated from. But obviously, I would love for you guys to kind of like tell that story um, about how those croquetas kind of originated, and uh, you know where you guys are today. Yeah, so um, uh, the story's really funny. <laughs> um, so it started off at a ventanita at a bakery, right? Um, so I would go all the time with my dad. Uh, every Sunday, like religiously, we'd go all the time. Um, and I was waiting for my order like everyone else does, right? And then the f- person right after me was like, dame dos croquetas. No big deal, whatever. We all say that. And then <laughs> yeah. the second person was like, dame dos croquetas y una, un cafecito. I'm like, okay. Uh, third person, dame dos croquetas y una, una tostada. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Like, it's too much. Like, people are just saying it too often. It's like, as often as you say, like, Google, right? Right. Um, so, I immediately, I went to my phone. I go to doscroquetas.com. It's available. Boom. Buy it. I go to Instagram. Buy it. Uh, excuse me. I reserve the, the username. And um, were, were you already, like, thinking about starting, a, like, know. a croqueta shop no. at all? Or you just... No, I just wanted to grab all of it. So, okay. I just, like, immediately, like, just tried to get all the IP possible. Got it. Um, and then a long time passed. And then I uh, reached out to Vicky. Uh, so she's my aunt. Um, and I'm like, look, like you make fire food, the best of the best, <laughs> like, let's do this. Like, let's make a, a, a croqueta company. Nice. Um, cause there's really nothing like there out there. It's just like yeah. ham, chicken or cheese. Nobody's really innovating in the space. It's true. I mean, you guys took croqueta to like a whole other level. Like my thing is like, right. A croqueta, like you said, a traditional is either ham, chicken. I mean, some make like a seafood croqueta. Right. Mm-hmm. What was it that said like, Hey, why why not put this in a croqueta like what was it in your guys head that said like we have the opportunity to pretty much put anything on yeah. a croqueta or bread it with rice krispies if we want right, to right <laughs> well i mean when he when he reached out to me i was like you know you want to do croquetas in miami there's croquetas in every corner right. so um you know and, and talking about it number one i was just like do you know how difficult it is to make croquetas? it is it's i hear my grandma difficult. always talk about how she wants to just make ham croquetas and she's like oh, but it's gonna it's gonna take a while it's, it's time it's consuming. Yeah. so it's a uh, it's, it's definitely a labor of love yeah but um you know when he wanted to make these croquetas or you know it's like let's let's start this company and stuff i was like man there's croquetas everywhere and so you know we were we're both foodies and so we wanted to like stand out and and do things that we love to eat so that's where it started and that's where all the 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 beginning flavors came from you know it's like well what are things that we like to eat and what are things that uh we want to see in a croqueta and then it was my job to kind of like you know make sure that that happened and make sure it happened well not just like you know some big mush (laughs) put together yeah yeah. and did you have experience in making croquetas before or I was mean, my, like... my first experience making croquetas was with my grandmother, okay. you know, but, like, not a lot, you know. Got she it. used to make croquetas, but exactly, it was very time-consuming, so she didn't make it all, all that much. Um, but um, but I have a culinary background, so, you know, it's kind of like I can I can figure it out. Okay, awesome. So, now you guys are on store number two, mm-hmm. right? Um, tell us a little bit about that, because I know you were telling me that you guys are doing uh, shipping now out of there. Um, so tell us a little bit about how you guys got into that and how that how that's working out for you guys. Yeah. So uh, shipping was was a huge surprise and a huge success to us. Thank God. Yeah. Um, but we did it to pivot during the pandemic, where you know we were closed for like what four months, the dining room, three months. Yeah. Um, and I remember we're just like, look, we just have to do this, like to see if we can drive more revenue to the store since we had to close the dining room. Um, and it was crazy. Like we have shipped to Michigan, Wisconsin, nice. Uh, all the places that you don't really think you're going to be shipping croquetas to, yeah. uh, even Alaska, Hawaii, like we Holy have, we have, we have touched every uh, every state, which is and really how crazy. how do croquetas, like how do they travel? And I mean, because like well. what's what's the first off, how long does it take to get a croqueta to Alaska? And then 
they get there and they're in everything good everything is shipped yeah everything is shipped uh, overnight so oh, okay. um you know it's it's we we prepare the croqueta fry it um so that it's also the ease for the customer they can just put it in an air fryer, put it in an oven, okay. so it's already fully cooked. Okay. They're just finishing it off uh, it. over there, and so they're not having to deep fry. Uh, of course, there. yeah, yeah. So, and, then, and then it gives them the option, because then they can taste all the different varieties. So they'll get a variety pack, which is, you know, um, we have 10 different flavors, and so they get two of each flavor. Okay. And then they can mix, mix and match afterwards, but it's, it's fun for them, because they... Yeah. Since, like, from the very beginning, people would try to uh, try to order from us, can do ship, do ship, and we never shipped at the very beginning. And so we always talked about shipping, but the pandemic is really what gave us that push to, like, let's get it, it out didn't there. Really give you, everyone yeah, it was, didn't give you an option. Right, right. And logistically, how did you guys figure out how, you know, how to do that? Like, who, who, who sh- like, you guys can ship it through U- USPS? Like, how does that work? We shipped through UPS, okay. um, but it was, like, you know, weeks of testing where yeah. I was the pretend UPS delivery right. guy. Exactly. I would cook it, throw it around, like, <laughs> treat it as if I was, you know, driving the the, yeah. the, the package. Right. Uh, secure the bag. You gotta, <laughs> like, it is gonna be safe. Yeah. Um, and then once, uh, once the testing was done, we're like, all right, let's do it. Let's go live. Um, and it was, like, I mean, the first day was, like, I don't know, 200 orders, like, right away and i'm just like what the hell's happening like how, how do they even know like because bringing exposure to a physical restaurant is a lot easier than the internet like the yeah. internet is just you know you got to find those croquetas.com exactly um so it was really surprising it was awesome yeah. yeah that's that's what i was gonna ask you next um you know if i'm not here in miami how how does one kind of like come across obviously you guys have a pretty large uh social media presence have you seen like kind of like a, a correlation between like who you guys have on social and kind of like who's the ones ordering from you guys, like in um, outside of Florida or outside yes, of Miami? Yes and no, because the way it'll work is obviously like I don't care what year we're in, word of mouth is the best tool right. of all time, yeah, no matter what. Definitely. It never goes out of style. I agree with that. Um, so people will order in Michigan and then like send us an email being like, hey, I had a, I went over to my, my cousin's house in Michigan. We ordered uh, whatever we tried and there's some Dinah like orders from you guys. Yeah. Um, so it's just word of mouth is, is just the best for us. Nice. Right. It never fails. That's awesome, and to me, the fit my cool my like the coolest concept was the 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 flight. Yeah. So you get to pick your four croquetas, which one are the four that you want to try, and then with the special sauces that right. that come, and all the sauces are homemade yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, nice. we love. I mean, I love sauces. So yeah, no, me too. Everything, sauce, everything yeah. that you know, uh, all of the sauces have a pairing to it. You know, for me, it was important that everything works. You know, in balance. So. That was really important, and, and it's just, it's fun. It's just fun to, like, you know, mix and match sauces as well, too. Once you know the one that you like, then you start, you know, testing other ones, and and then, um, and it's all about, like, sharing. So when you get the flight, you know, you're, right. I mean, I've, I've seen some people house 12 croquetas in one city, oh, but, <laughs> but, like, it's, it's nice. Like, the one of the funnest things is, like, you know, when you see them dipping in the sauce, and they take a bite, and then they dip, and they're, like, you know, they're handing it to, to you know, their friend or whatever, and so they're just, it's kind of like a, a discovery of, of the croquetas and like, oh, try this one. That's oh, the best. Yeah, that's cool. And you guys do uh, other items besides uh, croquetas. What are some of the other uh, food options that you guys have at the restaurant? Uh, we have amazing shakes. Our shakes really? are amazing. Our, yeah, our shakes are hand down amazing. Um, uh, everything that we do, uh, we try to make sure that we're using the best quality ingredients. Um, we use Rice ice cream, which is they're a local as well too. They're crafted uh, ice cream as well. Cool. Um, so everything we do is like the best quality that we can that we can get. Um, and and that's and that like we make for the i for the ice cream for the shakes. We do uh, whipped cream, our own whipped cream as well. So it's wow. not like a canned whipped cream. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, you can taste, you can really taste the difference. Yeah. Um, and um, like like I said, our, all, of, all of our sauces are handmade as well in-house. Um, we do the wraps as well, okay. bean, rice and beans. You know, we make the beans melts. as well too. I we mean, do we the banana melts. The menu, yeah, so yeah, so yeah. your menu is, is, is large. It's a yeah. large menu. I think it has to be like, so you can go there and experience croquetas in different forms also, like not just a croqueta. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you guys have a croqueta preparada as well. we got a croqueta preparada. We've cool. done a croqueta quesadilla. We've done oh, wow. like a croc and tots, which are really popular. The tater tots with croquetas and sauce and papitas. Oof, man. Uh, so we definitely can to remix them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. Well, before we move on, everybody, if you guys want to yes. do it, cheers and have Here a little Thank ice cold beer. Thank you guys for uh, being on. Thanks for having definitely, us. Definitely really cool to Thanks hear about the story of, of those croquetas. Excited to try this. I'm trying not to chug it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding yeah, myself right. back. So yeah, it, for anyone new listener, I know we've had uh, you know multiple episodes where we've talked about the beer, but 
It's a German lager brewed in Germany. It's really crisp, really light. Um, you know, we built it off of the thought of hot summer day out on the boat, something that you can have two or three. It's not a craft beer, which you know, a lot of people have like the misconception of it because, you know, you, you, you look at the packaging, it looks a little bit more crafty. Right. Um, but I mean, it's a, it's just a regular light lager. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know what to compare it to. It's pretty distinct, in my opinion. Um, but it's it's up there. I you know it's definitely not like a Bud Light or, or anything like that. It's it's more like and to me like in the category of like a Corona, a Stella, maybe a Heineken. Um, but easy easy to drink. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, you, essentially, you could find it Presidente, Sedanos, um, soon to be Win Dixie, um, and then uh, only in the state of in the state of Florida right now. But for now, yeah, right. for now, <laughs> it's only been since April that we started the oh, cool. started the beer, yeah. so that's great. It fun. is. I taste the crispness and and it's, and it's light and it's very clean flavor. Mm -hmm. it's, it's yeah, nice. definitely. What what uh, croqueta do you recommend with a with a beer? Oh, you know, um, I love the uh, the buffalo crack chicken. Okay, I did have that like, one. So yeah, that one was really good. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, part of the podcast, you know, we like to bring on entrepreneurs. You know, people. That have started businesses or you know looking to start businesses um and one of the things that's a common theme amongst entrepreneurs are kind of the the struggles that come with starting a business some of the obstacles that come with it um so i wanted to bring up uh the question you know what are some of the obstacles you guys face you know from inception uh to date um and and how have you guys kind of like work through them. I know we talked about a few mm -hmm. um, before the podcast, but, you know, starting the business, what were some of the obstacles that you guys faced? And, and you know, through the, the three years that you guys have been in business, what are some of the things that you guys have had to work through? Yeah. Uh, I'm, first of all, I love this question because <laughs> uh, I can vividly, from all like the pain and struggle yeah. uh, uh, and tough. success, I can paint it so easily. Um, I mean, the first, the first thing is like, what the hell are we doing? Right. That's the first, the first obstacle is like, we have no idea what we're doing. Yeah. Uh, we've never mass produced any product in our lives. At least I haven't. Um, and it's croquetas, right? So it's yeah. it's a it's a very challenging product to make. Just just like me, just trying to picture what that looks like. That just looks chaotic. Well, yeah. <laughs> and then when you have so many different flavors, you know, it's exactly. not like you're just making ham, 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 and ham. You True. know, like you have a lot of different flavors, so you have different runs as well too. Yeah, definitely. It's a lot. I mean, you have to deal with uh, sourcing ingredients. You have to think uh, marketing, right? So how do you make a croqueta sexy? How do you want people to purchase your product? Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, croquetas are all just like brown fried <laughs> product. So right. how do you uh, give it life, right? Um, and it's it's my favorite aspect of, of, of it is, is the marketing of it. Yeah, I think um, you've done an awesome job with you. it. And and the, the story, because I forgot that, that story about the name. I think that's awesome because people do order Dos Croquetas when, Pretty much. when they go to the... <laughs> it's straight the the English and Spanish I have it. Um, so that way we can always expand in other places I and do that. two croquettes. Um, but yeah, we started off as like super humble and a little pop-up. We rented out a warehouse want to see it was like $500 a month. We had like a little corner. Um, and we used to sell the croquetas at night there. Um, yeah. And I remember w we were like, well, first we have to see if people are going to pay more for, for right. croquetas, right? Because it's not like... Does the market, yeah, is the market receptive right. to it? Can we prove the concept, basically? Yeah. Um, and little by little, like we'd have repeat customers and like, holy shit, like people are, are swinging through, like this is great. Yeah, um, cool. And then it would be like the customer would come and like in the morning and have their breakfast and then they'd come at night and then like switch up their order. Um, and then there's like the aspect of the business where like the beginning is super fun. It's a blast because you're like little by little getting orders, right? Yeah. And then it's like, okay, well, how do we make this into a real business? Um, and that has to do with scaling. And you go from exactly. um, just like two employees to the, <laughs> from the beginning to yeah. We have like a little three. over 30. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and 30 then, employees? And then, well, yeah. It was wow. Three, right three, right and then, that's awesome. Yeah. 30, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Different personalities you're dealing with, different, different work ethics you're dealing with, uh, different passions in life, right? Not everyone you're going to hire is going to want to be like a croqueta. Of course, uh, and they don't right. see the vision the same way that right. you guys do. Right. Um, and then, yeah, after after you scale, now it's just the, the business side of it. So you don't know what you're doing first from a food and mass produ production aspect. Then you have to make sure that the uh, concept works for multiple different people that you're hiring, and then you have to make sure that you're dealing with payroll, logistics, licensing, yeah. permitting. <laughs> um, it's kind of like uh, knowing what to do when you don't know what to do. Like, when you put yourself in a position of, like, well, you know, like, I have uh, a loan, right? Like, I have debt. Like, I have a lot of uh, um, 
responsibility is like it puts you in a position to figure it out no matter what. Yeah, you don't give yourself that option to, you know, you you your back is against the wall and it's like I figure it out or it's okay. it's pretty much game over. Yeah, it's never been a uh, the idea has never been like we're we're not going to figure it out. Like it's always yeah. we'll just figure it out. We'll just do what it takes to figure it out, you know, um, mm-hmm. no matter what because we have we have families that we support exactly. as well too. So the the responsibility is huge. It's like no pressure. It's, yeah, exactly. The <laughs> responsibility is, the responsibility is huge, you know, and and um, you know, just making sure that everything is everything is done and like, yep. you know, trying to be everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> at the same time and trying to, you know, make sure that quality is good, trying to make sure that people are happy, trying to make sure the customers are happy right. and um, then throwing in shipping into the mix, and then you have like random curveballs, you know, like supply supply chain issues, you know, where you Which can't is huge right now. get something. So then you're trying to, you know, make something, and you have to pivot there as well too. Yeah, A worldwide pandemic. Yeah, yeah. who would who would have guessed? Just your, yeah. your, your oh, and, and that was like what, like month thirteen for you guys, basically yeah, when that like when right that hit. after we took this huge leap of faith to open a <laughs> yeah. brick and mortar store, and yeah. you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and like it, it was just just insane. But like that, that. Uh, but like you said, it 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 shifted not your business model completely, but it opened the door to a, a different model in the shipping, right? Where you right. were able to expand. Yeah. It and was kind a of catalyst find... for for really pushing that. You know, yeah. like we had always talked about doing, but it was like exactly. that's it. Like now, I mean, now and ever. Obviously, the pandemic for what it was, you know, affected a lot of people. But I also think like it expedited the inevitable, right? right? You know, across the board, where where people are working now more remote than ever, which we probably were going to go that way eventually, right? right? Where people were going to work a hybrid model. Uh, Restaurants were going to incorporate some sort of delivery, but they had to expedite how that process was going to work and how can they, you know, kind of, like you said, scale that out. Um, So I think it kind of just expedited, but like what we were talking about before, ad- adapting right to the current circumstances, and I think you guys did an amazing job of that. And I want you to kind of like talk about some, of, like you said, um, supply chain issues, but there's big issues with labor right now, right? right? Where it's kind of hard to find people to work, and you know, we don't know where they are <laughs> or what, what they're doing. doing. <laughs> what are know. they doing? Exactly. I mean, like we said, I know, I know, Amazon is poaching a crap yeah. load of people because they're offering these crazy, crazy uh, bonuses to right. people if they sign yeah. up, paying you know, wages that the small businesses can't can't afford yeah. to pay. Um, but tell them a little bit about what you guys are doing to kind of work through that labor issue because I think that's that's awesome. Yeah, I think. Uh, um First, it starts with culture, right? So we, we try to have an amazing culture at the company. Um, it's more than just a paycheck. Like, a paycheck is super important. Of course, we all need money to survive. But what else can you get outside of the job? Like, what leadership skills can you get outside of the job? Yeah. Any developmental skills you can get outside of the job? Um, and then, like, we're, we're experimenting heavily, and it launches actually soon, like, in a couple of weeks, um, a self-ordering kiosk. And it's, like, a beautiful piece of software that's, like, uh, if you look at our branding and stuff, you know that we're very particular about uh, design and, and uh, you know, curved corners. And, like, it has to be an amazing experience right. for our customers. Of course. Um, so, yeah, it's it's the wave. Like, how do we, how do we, and it's not necessarily how do we survive without people. Because I think people are super, super important to our business and our growth. Um, but it's how do we make their jobs easier so they can focus on other things. So, right. if I have a self-ordering kiosk. Like, now when I work at a Dos Croqueta store, now my job is to, like, make the best shakes possible where I can really focus on amazing customer service or, like, making the best croquetas possible. Yeah. Um, and it just takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of research. It takes a lot of testing um, and just being exhausting. Like, you have to just be over and over and over again to make sure that whatever we launch to our customers is just flawless. And it's, it, it, it's a labor of love. And the kiosk is going to be at both locations? It's going to yeah, be we're going to launch it on our main location okay. on 40th Street, and then we'll launch nice. it. And it's it's like our little testing hub. Like, yeah. whatever works there, because it's such a high-volume store, yeah. we know it works everywhere else. Awesome. Cool. Um, another thing that I wanted to ask, I know uh, you're a mom of two, from mm. what I saw. <laughs> um, how does one, you know, with... Three, ki- including me. <laughs> <laughs> Take care of me, please. With, with, um, with children, you know, kind of work through being a business owner... <laughs> while also juggling uh, a family. I mean, I have a I have a great support system with my husband, um, who works from home, but he's basically you know uh, takes him to school in the morning because yeah. I'm I'm at work super early and you know sometimes I'm not there after when they come home from school, and I have my mother and my father that you know also help and my mother in law. So it's like you know that whole thing. It, it takes is. a village. It takes a village. I wouldn't exactly. be able to do it without them. Um, and from the very beginning, I mean, my kids, my, my kids are, are six and nine now. So, and we've been around for a while. So I started when they were very young. And um, 
we used to, uh, at our pop-up, we used to close on the weekends. We used to close between 3 and 7, I think, or 3 and 6. And people would ask, why are you guys closed, you know, during this time? You guys would open in the morning and at night. And, and it was just basically, I have to go home and see my kids right. for a couple of hours. You, so, you got it. Right. Exactly. And so even, um, you know, a lot of it also was just me um, trying to show my daughter and my, my, my son that mommy's building something as well, too. Mm-hmm. So I never I never wanted to do the, um, the uh, mommy has to go to work. Mommy has to go to work. You know, right. I want to stay with you, but mommy has to go to work. Right. I, I always um, really tried to instill mommy's building something. Mommy wants to go to work as mommy's instilling. You know, I always try to put that positive spin on it as well. Right, too, and then that you're doing it for 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 them. At the right, end of the day. right, and like you know, um, like the, the biggest thing for me is that they're proud of me. You know, that they're like it's not like a mommy's never home. It's it's the you know they're like oh look at this look what my mom does. You know yeah, that's cool. Exactly. So that is like pretty cool for me. That is yeah. But okay. um, but it's but it's it's very difficult. You know, I'm the cuddler one, so that's that's nice. When I get home, I'm the and they're the ones that come to me and. Yeah. Um, but I come home to, to cook dinner as well, too. So it's like my job <laughs> is never done. Yeah. But it's but it's fine. And, like, you know, in the times that I would have a break, it was like I would literally lay down on the floor and give them when they were very little. I would give them, like, a pack of stickers. And I'd be like, okay, put stickers all over me. You know? <laughs> and so it was like they were doing like, – I still always, you know, That's had awesome. the time to, to do stuff with them. Um, and then I treasure every little time that I can with them yeah. because it's, it's, it's rough. <laughs> I, I can imagine that. And- I think it's like you know, kind of to go on to the point that 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 you were talking about. But I think it's um, it's really important to do something that that you're passionate about, right? And something that you really really care about because you know we all have to deal with that at some right. capacity. You know, whether we work like a regular nine to five job, um, we're in school, right? Everyone's timing in life is a little bit different, but we all have something that you know we're passionate about and 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 we want to do. And I think you know you have an opportunity to to help your family, but at the same time, do something that, that you're passionate about. And I think that is something that's really valuable. And, you know, part of, part of, you know, the way I've always looked at life is like, why not both? Right. Because I came, I used to work for the company kind, kind snacks, Mm -hmm. right. Like the kind bars Mm -hmm. and their motto was always like the and mentality, right? Like it didn't have to be this or that it Mm -hmm. could be this and that. Right. Mm -hmm. So you had the opportunity to, create something that you guys were passionate about, but you also had the opportunity to take care of your family with mm-hmm. something like that. And I think that's, that in itself is, is, is like, is magical, right? Yeah, like it's something that people dream of and you guys have been able to do that, which is awesome. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot of balance, you know, and some yeah. days it's not balanced and some days, <laughs> you know, course. I mean, it is what it is. You yeah. just, but you just have to, you know, make the best every day and just, you know, figure out what you can do to, to try to find that balance. Definitely. Um, and that's awesome. Thank, thank you for, for oh, sharing that. Thanks that's, for asking that's, about that. That's awesome. <laughs> um, so another part of it is like, you know, the mental health aspect, right? Obviously juggling on like the physical level, but you know, stress is like a big thing about it. What are some of the things that you guys do to, to take care <laughs> I'm happy yeah, to have a sip of the, you know, Here, what, on the bottom of the beer, it says stay tranquilo. Exactly. So I think there's a reason for that. A sip. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But what you know? What 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 is it? You know, I, I I do think that there's multiple components to it, right? Like you know, some people say they you know they, they'll do yoga or they go to the gym or they meditate. But I think you know, like that's like kind of like I do that personally. But I also think that's kind of like a, a forced thing. Not everyone has a time to do that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do think like a portion of taking care of your mental health is like being around friends, being around family, like, right. you know, those socializing, other being like kind of just disconnecting travel, you know, those, those kind of things. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to be anything like enlightening, but, right. um, what is it that you guys do to kind of, like, I guess like, you know, disconnect and give There's yourself a chance. So many different answers. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the first is the mind is incredibly powerful. Oh like, yeah, it is super strong. Good for the good and for the bad. Crazy. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you can, you can kind of snap yourself out of depression by perspective. So you can make a decision, right? So we can uh, we can hit lows and be depressed like there's no one, there's no labor, right? Yeah. Um, but no labor is, is a simple problem to fix. It can be fixed, right? A uh, bigger problem would be our sales are shitty or nobody likes our exactly. brand, right? So perspective usually like wakes me up really quickly. True. Um, reminding myself I have a family. Uh, I get to work with my, my literally my best friend, right? <laughs> um, I have food. I can shower. Like telling yourself that you're 
killing it usually works and it's not like you're lying to yourself you're just telling yourself the reality just yeah. reminding yourself just your brain is just trying to trick yourself into thinking that it's not that yeah. way right. well, it's about being grateful you know we, we we're grateful for what we have and stuff and it's not always exactly like sometimes we'll take turns you know it's like uh oh, this is going on whatever and he's like you know it's grateful it's, you know this is we live in a free country we you know all this stuff but um but yeah i mean i mean i think i think we laugh a lot like we're so yeah, we stupid <laughs> we're stupid Good. silly sometimes yeah. that that it's like we 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 make each other laugh yeah. and i think that's part of it because even through like the worst times we're just ridiculous you have to. at the end you of the day to. it's you know life is short right. right and like you said you can't take it for granted right. um and i and i'm i'm a big believer that perspective is everything right like how we choose to look at things is how basically we live our life um, because me and you could be living the same exact situation, right. but if we look at it in a different right. lens, I'm going to enjoy life maybe a lot more than you are, right? right? So um, I do think the big component is to is just telling yourself, hey, like right. everything's okay, and that if it's not okay right now, it will be okay. And I think that is enough to like keep the wheels moving. Yeah. I mean, you also become dumb as a business owner. Like shit is thrown at you all yeah, the time. Yeah, exactly. Every day, right. no matter what. Like crazy surprises. I'm yeah. talking about like a... Fifteen thousand dollar repair surprise, like we get surprises all the time, and it's just like I mean, all right, we'll like, like you said, like, we'll, fi- we'll figure right, it out. Right, right, right. Yeah. You know, like. But as far as that, and also like in our culture with our employees and stuff too, I mean, I'm a big proponent of telling everybody. You know, it's like I, I don't know. I wake up every morning. I'm a morning person, so so am I. I'm you not, know, yeah. and I wake up sometimes three o'clock in the morning. I'm in you know by by that's, four a.m. That, yeah, that's like my mom. My mom's yeah. up at four a.m. How the hell? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I like it's also my quiet time right. too. So I'll get into the kitchen stuff, and I'm I I, I will meditate as well too while I'm doing stuff. I'm exactly. like listening to like you know really relaxing music, and mm-hmm. um, but it's also I just have a choice every morning. You wake up, you have a choice. Yeah, sure. You know, are you gonna be mediocre? Or are you gonna be excellent? You know, exactly. you're gonna be. And so those are the things that we also try to instill in our employees as well too. That's like awesome. you have a choice. Like. People can go to any restaurant they want to. So are they going to want to go to a place that's excellent, you know, where where you want great customer service, you want great food, you want, like, you want the whole thing, you know. Mm -hmm. They're spending their money there. So you want to be able to give them all of that. Or, you know, or do you just want to, like, do, you know, half-ass your job and just be okay with it? Like, I'm just not okay with it, you know. so And that's what separates you, you know, and the position that you're in because, again, you're where the way you think, right? You could settle and just be like, okay, this is what it right. is, or I can choose to right. try to make something better out right. of this. Because at the end of the day, we all have that decision. Right, right. And we have that freedom of decision. You know, One, we get to live in, in the United States where right. that even exists, where right. that doesn't even exist outside. But even on a different level, like as a human, we have that level, right? We're not, we're not like a... We're not a chimpanzee or right. you know something like that where they don't have that cognitive ability. We right. physically have that ability to make decisions that necessarily make our life the way we want it to be which right. that's powerful right and it's such an e- easy thing too it it's is. just a choice we over, yeah. 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 we make choice. it more complicated right. than, right. than it course, needs to yeah. be 100 percent. awesome so before we kind of wrap it up we do like a, a quick segment at the end like rapid questions just to get uh get to know you guys um the first question i want to ask you what's your favorite croqueta that you guys have that you guys have made so they're, they're my babies yeah like, how do i choose <laughs> one it's like you know T- top three Mine's for sure the 305. It's picadillo, uh, platito maduros, and queso blanco. Oh, I mean, what else Jesus do you want? Jesus Christ. It's like the Cuban dish. And yeah. And, 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 <laughs> and we I, serve it with the guava sauce stop. and dali sauce. It's mm. delicious. Yeah. That sounds That's so easy good. easy for me. Um, I mean, medianoche is my favorite sandwich, my favorite Cuban yeah, sandwich. Same. So medianoche, that was like one thing that, you know, when I created that one, I wanted to create like the layers of flavors. But medianoche so croqueta? Medianoche so croqueta. Good. That we won, we won an award for it. So medianoche croqueta. And then like you, that one is a labor of love as well too, is we're, you know, toasting off uh, medianoche bread. And yeah. we, you know, there's, that's what we coat it with. Wow. And so, it's you know, incredible. it's pickles and mustard. And so it's it's a lot of the different nuances yeah. on that on that croqueta that I think really shine through when you have that one. That's one of my favorites. And also, because I have two children, I can't just choose one. Um, the other one is the um, uh, spinach coconut curry. It's a mm. vegan one. Okay. And so, so there's no animal products in cool. it. And it's um, it ha- it's a little spicy, but it's uh, coconut curry and spinach. It's Yum. amazing. And which ones are your kids' favorite? 
Oh god, they love ham. They love that <laughs> they love, original. They're really? Like, ham. Yeah, man. They're they're <laughs> the like traditional. ham, ham. Like they're they're the ham and and always like, did you bring me a shake? That when I get nice. home, did you bring me a shake? <laughs> no. I have to try the shake. That I haven't tried. <laughs> the shakes really are great. Yeah, yeah, I have to try the shake. Awesome. Um, next question: uh, the beaches or the mountains? It's just not a question. I like mountains. The answer's both for me. Yeah, yeah no, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm both. They both uh, um, offer a little bit. You do get exactly. both best of both worlds. Yeah, there. exactly. Um, but to me, the beach is just home, so I always kind of like lean that way. But the mountains do offer. But it's a different. It's a whole different vibe. Yeah. When you're, it's like a different mindset. Everything is just different in the mountains. I agree. Mm-hmm. It's like a sense of like I don't know. It's it's, it's a different type of peace compared I to like the cleaner, water. I feel like I don't know. It's, it's just it's awesome. Just the smells of the you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just like it's the nature. Chill. I agree. Um. All right. Um. A book or a podcast that both of you would uh, recommend for someone to read or listen to if you're not a reader? I don't read much. Okay. Uh, I, I read a bunch of like blogs and stuff, but I don't read an actual book. But I did start, um, because of TikTok, uh, 48 Laws of Power. Okay. Very interesting. Uh, it has kind of taught me a lot of mistakes that I've made. Uh, just kind of like a defending yourself, in, in, a, in a, especially in the business world. Um, so I love it. I mean, I think it's great. I'm on like the seventh law of power right now. <laughs> it just nice. started. Um, I mean, I, 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 Brendan Bouchard is a podcast, podcaster, um, he has a couple books out as well too, and I just quoted one, you know, of his things. Every day you have the, um, the choice, you know, to, to wake up and be excellent, you know, so that's the, that's what I, you know, that's what I, uh, you try to live my by. motto. Yeah, yeah, that's what I try to live by. I like it. Awesome. All right. Cool. So, uh, before we wrap it up. Where, where can they find you guys on social media? If they want to order some croquetas, where can they order these croquetas? Um, and just anything you guys want to share before uh, we wrap it up? Yeah, uh, uh, dosgroquetas.com. You can follow us on Instagram, of course, Facebook. Uh, we're not on TikTok yet. But if anyone wants to run our TikTok, let me know. Um, I might have some. Yeah, there. and uh, <laughs> and uh, this this year will be the, the probably the biggest year of our lives when it comes from an expansion standpoint. Mm-hmm. And we're very, very, very exciting. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. I'm excited for you guys and uh, thank you guys for, for being here and you know sharing Thanks some of your insights and, and stories. I really appreciate that. Back to work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we get to go to Brian. All right. Well, thank you guys for tuning in um, for another episode of the Stay Tranquilo podcast. Um, again, thank you guys for jumping on. Um, if you guys have any questions on where to find them, you can always reach out to us. Um, if you're a new listener, you can listen to the podcast across all platforms. You can find the beer at uh, Sedanos Presidente Supermarket. And if you're going to follow us on social media, it's uh, at Stay Tranquilo and at JohnnyCuba.us. Thanks, guys.